Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is Chapter and Verse, and this is a book haul. I haven't done a book haul in a very long time, uh, as you know if you've watched this channel for any length of time, and uh, the reason for that is, of course, that Kelly and I did not buy books last year. You know, we just focused on reading what we already owned, and we were going to do that again this year. Uh, we're still focusing pretty much on what we already own, but, uh, but we've bought some books, right? We got our income tax return. We put most of it toward the house, but we also set aside some fun money uh, for us to uh, kind of play with in our in our local bookstore. Um, so yeah, a few of these books you will have already seen in uh, videos on her channel. Uh, there was one, the first one I'm going to talk about here. Uh, it's a book that's kind of both of ours that we kind of bought for for both of us, and uh, and two of them. Um, I've already talked about very, very briefly in um, a haul video that I did with Kelly on her channel. I will link that video uh, down below so that you can see, uh, if you haven't seen yet, uh, what Kelly has bought with some of her uh, some of her fun money. But I thought it would be um, cool to just be able to say a few a few more words in a in a longer video on my channel. Kelly likes to keep uh, videos on her channel like just very. Very neat and very tidy, um, whereas I, as you know, like to kind of prattle on. Uh, but the first book that I'm going to talk about is a book that Kelly's already talked about on her channel, and that is Lonesome Dove, right? So uh, we ordered this the night of learning of Larry McMurtry's death, and um, Kelly has read this before, right, for her Pul uh, Pulitzer Project, uh, but I've never read it. And I know that many of you really love this book, uh, that it's, you know, not just a book that you like or admire, but it's it seems to be a novel that is really particularly dear to some of you, um, which intrigues me. My only exposure to him has been The Last Picture Show, which I've read twice and I've taught. Um, and I taught it in a class that was on uh, literary adaptations to film and the reason why I taught the last picture show was not because I was a, a keen fan of the novel I mean I liked the novel I didn't love it but I, I absolutely adore um, that film the Peter Bogdanovich film of the last picture show so uh, but anyway yeah when he died when we learned of his death I thought you know it's time it's time for us to buy Lonesome Dove uh, and so we did we ordered it that night uh, let's see here. All right, so the second, this is a two-volume set here, and, uh, and I've been wanting this for a really long time, uh, a really, really long time, uh, probably nine, eight or nine years now, but it was fucking expensive, and uh, so I thought, well, I will use the bulk of my fund money from the tax return this year to finally break down and buy it, and it was $125, I think. And that is the two-volume set from Cambridge uh, Library Collection, Phantasms of the Living, uh, by Edmund Gurney, Frederick W.H. Myers, and Frank Podmore. Now, these three men were part of the crew. The crew, that's maybe not the, the best word for it, but I'm going to stick with it. Uh, they were part of the crew that was assembled uh, by William James who was a uh, brother to Henry James, uh, if I remember correctly. And, um, and William James and his, uh, his, his crew of researchers um, set about trying to not prove or disprove, but trying to investigate in a serious scientific way um, the phenomenon of mediums of the uh, the mid to late uh, 19th century. And um, their uh, experiences, their uh, travails, were um, documented in this book, which is a favorite of mine. I've talked about it numerous times on my channel. If you've never read it, you absolutely should. This is Ghost Hunters, uh, William James and the Search for Scientific Proof of Life After Death by Deborah Blum, Blum like Plum. And if you're a fan at all, uh, and again, I apologize if you've heard this before, but if you're a fan at all of the, the historical narrative nonfiction of a writer like Eric Larson or Timothy Egan, this book will be right up your alley. It is absolutely mesmerizing. Um, this book has probably the best opening, opening few pages of any book I've ever read. I defy anyone to read the first, God, what is it? 
Let's see the first. It's the prelude. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six pages of this book. I defy anybody to read them and just not be hooked, right? Like if if ever there were a book, right, nonfiction or otherwise, um, that comes with its own set of barbed hooks to to sink into you. It is this book. So, so Phantasms of the Living, right, this, this two-volume set, um, is the document of, uh, of, the, of the study uh, that these three men uh, did of more than 700 um, cases of sensory phantasms and hypnotic experiments. This was one of the first attempts to deal scientifically with the hypothesis of psychic thought transference and to catalog and provide a body of evidence in its support. Volume 2 presents data and analyses of auditory, visual, and tactile hallucinations and those of a reciprocal or collective nature. Uh, it contains addenda and a conclusion for the two volumes. Um, there's also in the first volume uh, an impressive essay, uh, apparently on the history of witchcraft. So, yeah, I mean, when you read about what these people went through and what they studied, um, and, uh, and the different kind of strange figures that they studied in Deborah Blum's book, um, you will, like me, find yourself wanting to, um, to read their thoughts in their own words. And I mean, granted, this is, this is a lot of text, uh, and I don't know when I'll ever get to it, but it's probably going to be something that I read sort of piecemeal, right, uh, section by section. But I am just, I am endlessly fascinated by ghosts, by uh, spiritualism as a movement, right, uh, by, you know, I mean, around that same time, I mean, the, 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 the great fascination with the possibility of um, fairy folk, um, you know, the Cottingley fairies uh, was, was a case that I was profoundly interested in uh, when I was in my teens. And uh, yeah, so this, this is, again, right, it's just something that I've wanted for a long time and I finally had the money to buy it, so I did. Uh, so next up, along those same lines, is uh, The Secret Commonwealth of Elves, Fawns, and Fairies by Robert Kirk. And, and I think I actually just read the back of this in, um, in Kelly's video, so you might want to just pop over there and, and take a look at it. But, uh, you know, I have, since childhood, really, um, I have wanted to believe in fairies and elves, and I've just... You know, I, I'm, I'm one of these people who is suspicious of the possibility of there being another world behind this world, right? I've always been really in love with the idea of, um, of there being kind of times of the day, right? Dusk, dawn, midnight, um, where the kind of veils between the worlds would thin and you'd be able to see something of what was transpiring in that other world. And... Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there, there's obviously there's no proof for something like this, um, regardless of you know William James and his uh, his team of um, fearless researchers uh, turning up anything. But I mean, I just I would love it if it were true. I would love it if it were true. And uh, and this is a book I've been aware of for for quite some time. And um, I find myself wondering if it will make it easier or more difficult for me to believe um, in the possibility of, um, of this kind of other world behind uh, or adjacent to this world. So we'll see. And then next up, uh, it's another book I talked about on uh, Kelly's channel. And this is the most recent novel by Tim Winton, uh, The Shepherd's Hut. And Tim Winton, uh, as you guys know, is one of my very favorite writers. Um, he might, might, I mean, depending on the day, right, depending on what kind of mood I'm in, I might even say he is my favorite living novelist, right? Uh, usually that, that title goes to Peter Carey, another Aussie. Um, but there's just something about Tim Winton's voice. You know, some of you have seen him, uh, his work discussed here recently. Uh, Heidi from uh, My Reading Life and, uh, and some of her booktube friends have been Oh, reading um, works of nature writing, and they just read uh, his memoir. I think it's called Island Home. I have it right over there. I haven't read it yet. But um, there's something about Tim Winton's voice that just leaps off the page, and there's something really kind of comforting about it, even when the text itself is, uh, is covering really, really dark material. 
Um, you just, you feel like you're in really, really good hands when you read a Tim Winton novel. And, um, and I love this cover. I absolutely love this cover. So, uh, glad to finally, uh, own this. And then I ordered my first folio book in quite some time. Folio Society released one of my favorite novels and I bought it as soon as I could. And that is The Road, right? Cormac McCarthy's The Road. Um, uh, some of you will remember a few years back, uh, a couple of years back when, uh, Steve Donahue and, uh, and a strip cover lit, um, at the time, this was, this was back when, uh, before that channel had sort of fallen into disgrace. Um, they did a, uh, a read along of the road and, uh, and all three of them just hate the book and just were picking it apart. And, uh, Kelly and I, uh, it was Kelly's idea actually, um, uh, decided to make videos um, in defense of the road where we didn't say anything. We just uh, we just stood with our copies of the road. And a number of other people made uh, examples of those videos as well. Um, and just just saying, I stand by the road. And uh, and that was that was wonderful. That was really cool. Um, I still haven't read this a second time. I read it. Uh, very, very shortly after it was first published. I still um, remember my first reading of it so clearly. Yeah, there are moments in this novel that just fill me with such dread. And, uh, and there are moments in this novel that feel, um, I don't know, that they almost seem to transcend the art form of, of the novel. There, there are moments in the book that feel cosmic somehow in the way that they move me um, as, as a person and as a reader. Um, as a man, I suppose, um, as a son, right? I'm, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a father, Kelly, and I don't have kids, uh, except for Little Blue. Folio Editions, uh, have specially commissioned original artwork in them. And the artwork in this edition of The Road, there we go, is perfect. Like, it perfectly captures the, the tone and the mood of this novel, as does the design of the book itself, right? The way in which the air in the book, the skies in the book, uh, because the sun is kind of um, filtered through all of this, all of this ash in the atmosphere. You know, everything has this, this kind of red, kind of streakiness to it. And uh, I just, I just think it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful addition. I was so thrilled to see that they released it. And they all come in these slip cases as well. So I think this was, 70 bucks, something like that, $70. Um, and then lastly was a book that I was not planning on buying. I was going to get it when it came out in paperback. And then um, W.W. W. Norton did what they, what they decided to do and uh, canceled its publication three, maybe three months into its publication. And that is um, the Blake Bailey uh, biography of Philip Roth. And, uh, yeah, I mean, who God knows how I'll feel about this book. Um, you know, there are, uh, critics who I really like, who, whose work I really like, who loved it and critics, uh, whose work I really like and who I respect who hated it. So who knows, uh, what I'll think of it. So when I found out that Norton had officially taken this out of print, um, I spent the rest of that day just seething with rage and, uh, you know, made it over to our local bookstore as soon as they opened, hoping that they still had copies of it, which they did. They had two. Um, so I picked up uh, the nicest one, and uh, now I own it. So, um, yeah, I won't say really uh, much more huh, about Norton's decision to take it out of print. If you're at all curious to know my feelings on it, uh, I would say a week after learning of their taking the book out of print, um, I came across the uh, the Author Guild's statement on uh, Norton's decision. And, well, the Author Guild statement pretty much lined up exactly with what I had been thinking. Um, yeah, I had spent a week just livid with rage that this had happened. And, uh, you know, for people to say, oh, well, you were pissed because, you know, it's, it's a biography of a writer that you really like. No, no, that's, that's not true. Uh, it could have been 
It could have been a biography of of uh, the writers of the Left Behind books, okay? Um, it could have been a biography of uh, Fernando Pessoa, right, who's, uh, who's now the Book of Disquiet, um, which is essentially just hundreds and hundreds of pages about a guy moping and feeling like he has to puke. Um, it could have been a biography of him, and I would have still been every bit as angry uh, about what, uh, what happened uh, with it. So... So anyway, yeah, again, I will link to uh, the Author Guild statement on uh, Norton's decision. And uh, if you're at all curious to know kind of the fine print of how I feel about it, that letter uh, or that statement does a pretty good job of summing up my own position on it. So, uh, yeah, that's my book haul. Uh, I don't know when the next one of these will be. Um, probably not until after Christmas, I would guess. Uh, but who knows? And, uh, yeah, I'm going to head back upstairs now and uh, do some more of my maybe Midrash reading. Really, really enjoying uh, the book that I'm reading for it. Uh, inspired. Is it inspired? Yeah, inspired by uh, Rachel Held Evans. And uh, I'm about half done, almost half done with that. I'm hoping to finish it this weekend. We'll see. But, um, uh, yeah, maybe Midrash actually is just proving to be really deeply rewarding. Uh, this year it was last year in its inaugural year um, as well, but there's just something about it uh, right right now. Some of the conversations that I've had with people, um, some of the videos that I've seen, not all of the videos that I've seen, but some of the videos that I've seen have been, uh, uh, you know, just just really rich and lively and warm and thought provoking and uh, just wonderful, uh, just wonderful stuff. So uh, anyhow, I hope you guys are having a good weekend. And I will see you all again uh, very soon. Adios.